Here we have an equilateral triangle ABC, and we also have a segment BD, which has the same length as the sides of equilateral triangle. And we know that angle CBD is 40 degrees. And we ask to find the measure of this red angle, ADC. We can approach this problem in multiple ways. First of all, notice that this big angle B, ABD, consists of 60 degrees coming from equilateral triangle plus this 40 degrees, total is 100 degrees. The next thing notice that triangle ABD is an isosceles triangle, one angle of 100 degrees. The other two should be congruent to each other and each of them is going to be 40 degrees. Next thing to note is that triangle CBD is an isosceles triangle. We know one angle 40 degrees and the other two have to be congruent and each of them has to be 70 degrees. So we find this big angle D is 70 degrees, top part is 40 degrees, so the bottom part has to be 30 degrees. And that seems to be the end of this problem. Well, that could be the end of the problem. Or we can investigate this problem a little bit more. So what if we not gonna say that the angle CBD is 40 degrees right away. We're gonna say it's Y degrees. In this case, what do we find? How does this angle, red angle, be interested in depends on Y. And it turned out that if you do the same work right here, same kind of math, only assuming that this angle is Y, not 40 degrees, you end up getting angle ADC to be again at 30 degrees. So apparently the measure of this angle does not depend on this angle Y. All right, so that's a little bit more general result, a little bit more interesting. So are we done now? Well, we could be done, or we could be investigating this a little bit more. And we could be asking the question, why the angle ADC does not depend on this angle Y? And more generally, what is it dependent? To answer that question, we notice that point A, C, and D lay the same distance from point B. We can draw a circle here that goes through points A, C, and D. And this circle has a center at the point B. But now, if you look at the angle ADC, you find that point D, the vertex of this angle, is on the circle. So angle ADC is an inscribed angle. Also notice that angle ABC is the central angle. And the central angle ABC is subtended by the same arc AC as our inscribed angle ADC. And in this case, we know that inscribed angle is half of the central angle. Central angle is 60 degrees. So it is not a surprise that ADC is 30 degrees. And now notice, we can change this angle Y. What if we pick up another point D prime on the circle? So this point D prime lays the same distance from point B as point D. And now look at the angle A D prime C. Well, that's also an inscribed angle that is subtended by the same arc AC. This angle D prime also has to be half of the same central angle ABC. And now what we find that the angle D that we're interested in is directly related to this angle ABC. If we specify angle ABC, we automatically know the angle ADC. It's half of angle ABC. So now we can create a lot of geometrical problems from here. We can first of all modify angle Y. We don't have to take 40 degrees. The result will not depend on that. 
Now we can also make the angle ABC whatever we want, within the reasonable limits, of course. But still, it doesn't have to be 60 degrees. Obviously, in this case, we're not going to get an equilateral triangle ABC, but we can have an isosceles triangle. That might be an interesting problem as well. And now, question for you. Which way do things better? Which way is more insightful? Does it really matter how we solve this problem? Leave a comment.